Hmm. Lady Constance peered at the macaroons with a discerning eye, like a master jeweler inspecting a freshly mined diamond. When it came to sweets, young girls had two stomachs. Lorena had heard that said before, and it was certainly the case with Lady Constance. Her taste in... Wait, what? They keep... Discord keeps disabling your accounts? Why? Her taste in saturated sweetmeats was unparalleled. I suppose they will do. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Miss Amy is such a cutie! Okay, I need an alternate game where I can date her too. Someone give me. <laughs> I need, I need, oh my gosh, Blackberry Honey, the female harem game. I need it. Give me, I want to date her so bad. Oh, Goth Neko. Got it. Gosh, I love her though. Oh my gosh, she's such a cutie. And I would say that's more pink hair than red hair, but I don't care. She's still a cutie. Oh, I have no idea how to do a French accent. I'm not even gonna bother. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for taking such good care of the young Mademoiselle Lorena. Well, um, it's my job. Lady Constant clicked her tongue against the roof of her mouth. I don't know if you've realized yet, Amy, but this girl here. Lady Constance gestured at Lorena. It's only a maid. You don't need to thank her. She's probably too stupid to understand you. Now, you look here. Oh, Mademoiselle Constance, surely you jest. Wow, what is happening to my voice? Mademoiselle Constance, surely you jest. She might be a maid, but she is a hardworking girl, is she not? Well, I wonder. A smile played at the corners of Lady Constance's lips. It was not entirely pleasant. Tell me, maid, what do you do when Reverend Mar Marner's services finish on Sunday? Um, well, I... Lorena shifted, suddenly guilty. She looked down at the floor and the patterned rug that covered it. I go back to Bly, naturally. You say it's natural for you to come back here, but you're always so very late. I am not so very late. Silence! You were a quarter of an hour later returning to Bly than the other maids last Sunday. And the Sunday before that. It might not sound like much of a dullard like to a dullard like you, but it all adds up to a considerable amount of time. I I I didn't realize. Of course you didn't. You've never learned how to do basic mathematics, have you? Lady Constance's eyes roved up and down Lorena's form. Her lips curled. Then let me phrase it in a way even you can understand, maid. You have wasted more than an hour during the last month alone. A whole hour. Now do you understand the gravity, gravity of your sins? Sins? That seemed a little harsh coming from a tiny mouth like Lady Constance's. But Lorena had no room to argue. Lady Constance had already outmaneuvered her. That was not spelled right, I don't think. This is sloppy. Slovenly... Slovenly behavior. I won't abide by it. Your maids are only allowed to attend church every Sunday out of the goodness of my mother's heart. But you've been taking advantage of that. You're using your faith as an excuse to take time off on your on our good graces. I, I, I never intended to. I just... What you intended is neither near, here nor there. I imagine you don't even understand what the most perplexing thing about all this is. Wh what? I spoke to Pauline earlier and she told me... Well, I could hardly believe what she told me. Pauline, was it? Lorena scowled. She couldn't help herself. The mere mention of Pauline's name often had this effect on her. Pauline said you were late returning to Bly because you were going to the post office. Of all things. Now, as a lowly uneducated maid, what purpose is there to in you going to the post office? I doubt you can read or write. Well, um... And know it might seem unbelievable, but I do know how to read and write, miss. 
Oh? Lady Constantine looked surprised by this news, surprising though it was. Her face remained calm, like a still puddle of water after a rainfall. It was even more disconcerting than outright anger. And how, pray tell, did you learn how to do that? My, um, my father taught me. So your father was a scholar, was he? Not exactly. He was a sailor, but he went to a village school when he was a child, and he learned a little here and there. He was always fond of stories, um, Robinson Crusoe and the Arabian Nights. He read them to me when I was a child. Oh my, how interesting. It seems we have an undiscovered genius in the house. This whole time, should I have been curtsying to you? M Mademoiselle Constance, please, your lesson. In a minute, Amy. I'm not through with Sappho here. What? Lady Constance's lips curled. Tell me, mate, if you really are so very intelligent as you seem to think, then why don't you help me with my French reading? F French? That's right. That shouldn't be too much for a, of a challenge for you, shouldn't it? After all, Lane Constant raised her eyebrows. You know how to read and write, you clever girl. What is this 12-year-old? What is her existence? Well, I, I've never studied French before, and I... That wasn't a question. It was an order. Come here. Lorena glanced about the drawing room awkwardly, but there was nobody to save her. Miss Amy certainly couldn't. There was nothing she could do. Lady Constance was in a particularly sadistic mood today. French always did this to her. It was no secret that French was Lady Constance's least favorite subject, and the fact her new governess was a French woman herself was no small source of scorn from the young girl. Fearing for her immediate well-being, Lorena hastened to Lady Constance's side. The young girl took a slim volume of French fables from her desk and handed them to Lorena. <sighs> Lorena took the book and opened it. She stared at the words on the page, but they had no meaning. They might as well have been written in Greek. I hated French. I took it in high school. Never again. It might sound nice and everything, but I just, I can't learn it. I can't learn any other language, to be honest, but I hated French. Well, Lady Constance's devilish smile grew wider. What are you waiting for? Start reading, please. But, but I, oh, are you saying La Fontaine is too difficult for you? I, I, um, well, too bad. I'm still waiting. Well, um, girl, just flub it. Just flub it. You, you can do that. Lorena cleared her throat. Fingers trembling, her face beat red. She began, La si, si, si gale, ayant shanti, tu le, it's a... But Lorena had no, not gone more than two lines when L Lady Constance interrupted her. Well, that was terrible, and I thought you could read. Lorena dipped her head, her face burnt bright red. That's not her fault, you... You little... You brat. You brat. She could read. Basic English, at least. French was way over her head. Didn't Lady Constance know how unfair she was being? But that didn't sway the young mistress. You see? Lady Constance gave Miss Amy a sidelong glance. If this genius of a maid can't understand La Fontaine, then I fail to see why I should be expected to. But Mademoiselle, French is important. You're expected to understand the gist of the language, at least, so you can inter integrate more easily into high society. And why should I need to integrate? I'm already part of high society. But, 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 nothing. I'm tired of these silly games. If you want to teach anybody French, teach this foolish maid, but I have no interest in it whatsoever. And with that, Lady Constance got to her feet and marched out of the drawing room. Miss Amy watched her retreating back, a frown on her face. Oh, dear. Lorena was inclined to agree with her. Lady Constance hadn't even tried any of her macaroons. How could she be so selfish? Because rich people. Thoroughly humiliated, Lorena stalked down the hallways of Bly with a face like thunder. Why was Lady Constance so unreasonable, expecting her to be fluent in French, of all things? and then using Lorena's incompetence as an excuse to escape. It beg beggared belief. How could one little girl be so very shameless? 
If you were my younger sister, I'd spank you in a second. That's what you deserve, you charlatan. Her feet thumped across the carpet, hard. By this point, she had worked herself up into such a state that she completely failed to notice the presence of another person. <gasps> Is this my girl? Is this my girl? Please, please be her. Please be her. Oh. Uh, ah! Until it was too late. Please, 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 please be my girl. Please. Lorena stumbled, her eyes wide, her fingers slackening. She dropped the broom to the floor, where it struck the wall with a dull thud, before gravity pulled it back down to earth. It rolled several times before bumping against the side of Lorena's foot, where it came to a standstill. Lorena had come to a standstill, too. It was impossible for her to move, even if she had wanted to. Thanks to her thoughts, which always seemed to trip her up, quite literally this time, she had managed to run right into the one person she did not want to run into. Yes! 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 <laughs> also, my gosh, why are her boobs so big? <laughs> Hello, Lori. That was quite the greeting you gave me. Uh, uh, you, um... Lorena blinked at the older woman with wide eyes. Her eyes were so wide, in fact, it looked like her irises had been swallowed up by her whites. Her cheeks, meanwhile, were slowly starting to turn pink. Wh why Of all the embarrassing things... Are you alright? You look rather flustered. I... Um tired too have you not been getting enough sleep i i get more than enough sleep well that's good one must look after their health it wouldn't reflect well on lady lenard if one of her precious maids collapsed from fatigue i um <laughs> well um i'm not gay for you or anything um <coughs> lorena tried to soothe the stammering of her heart but that was hard when she didn't know why it was stammering to begin with. And her mother had thought she could become friends with Tawa, or Tilly, as she had been termed. If Lorena's mother ever met the woman, Lorena was sure she would change her mind in a heartbeat. It was the only proper thing to do. Okay, good. The big boobs were kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> Lorena inhaled and took a step backwards, then two, then three. Three steps seemed a little sense seems like a sensible distance to her. It wasn't so very far she could look foolish trying to continue the conversation, but not so close to how his presence could unsettle her. I, um, I want to talk to you about something, actually. I ship it. You're right! Ah! I love her! You do. Yes, um, about what happened a couple weeks ago. Two weeks ago, hmm? How curious. Did something occur between the pair of us? Tawa blinked, one finger against her lower lip. She was quite the convincing actress. She could have given Emily Soldine a run for her money. Not that Lorena had ever seen Emily Soldine perform. She'd never been to London before in her li life. You know something did. Surely you remember what you said to me. Not everything. My memory isn't that good. And this was a while ago. But, well, you... You should know how you made me feel, at least. Silly, Lori. How could I possibly know how you feel? You didn't tell me. And contrary to popular belief, I cannot read minds. You should have been able to assume. But assumptions can often be wrong. That's why I was hoping to run into you, so I could confirm my hypothesis. What are you, a detective? Unfortunately not. I'm just a mere maid. I thought that much would be obvious. Lorena rolled her eyes. She had told herself she wasn't going to punch Tawa, but the urge was growing stronger and stronger by the second. You are impossible. I suppose I should take that as a compliment? Take it however you want. I don't care. I was under the impression, however, that you might want to apologize. And whatever gave you that idea? Because you upset me. Ah, uh, so I did upset you after all? That's what I feared. Yes, you did. You seemed to imply, when you removed that thorn, that I was the one to blame for getting hurt. I was simply trying to help, Lori. 
You helped me, yes, but you acted like you didn't want to, like I was getting in your way. Well, I never asked for your help. I didn't want it. You forced it on me, then expected me to fawn over you with gratitude. I don't see why you should. I should thank you, and I'm not going to. Lorena scuffed the floor with the tip of her shoe, her face twisted. If you dislike me, I don't know why you poked your nose into my affairs in the first place. We would both have been happier if you let me alone. Honestly, the unmade sighed. All her irritation towards the older woman had accumulated over the past few weeks, like pus inside a boil. Now, it finally had a chance to spill out, and oh, how much of it there was. Honestly, I don't understand where a lot of her frustrations are coming from. I don't! It was such a short interaction between the two. And, yeah, she said some things, but it wasn't, like, insulting. It wasn't like Pauline being like, yeah, you a slut. It was just like, yo, you're careless. You got a thorn in your hand. I don't understand her anger and frustrations. I think she's just gay and doesn't want to admit it. That's all I'm saying. Because I love Tawa. I love her. But this girl is just like, nah, I hate you. <laughs> I don't get it. She was even more upset than she had thought. Maybe this was in part because of how Lady Constance had toyed with her not five minutes ago. Lorena couldn't take her anger out on the small girl who derived such pleasure from her pain, but she could take her anger out on Tawa. No, she doesn't deserve it! She felt like she had a right to be angry with her. You don't! Tawa really was an exasperating woman. I just don't understand you. Evidently, if you did understand me, you wouldn't say such foolish things. So my feelings are foolish, are they? Please don't put words into my mouth. I never said your feelings were foolish. Only that you are acting foolish. You're splaying hairs. There's no real difference. I beg to differ. If you would pause to think, you'd realize that I don't dislike you, Lori. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Eee! You act as though you do. You can believe whatever you want, but you're ignoring a few key details. If I hated you, why would I have pulled out the thorn? And why would I have caught you when you fell? It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I don't understand how you think. I thought you only did it to make me feel bad. Oh dear, do I really seem that heartless? To be honest, yes. <laughs> my, my. I'm just gonna save real quick. Because I realize I haven't done that at all. Yeah, look at that. Nothing. <coughs> my, my. Tawa held her hands together to her front. It was an unusually humble gesture coming from the older maid, and it made her seem slightly more approachable than usual. A little less overbearing. I apologize if I hurt your feelings then. It wasn't my intention. Then what was? How did you think I was going to react? It didn't cross my mind, to be honest. You mean you just say things and you don't care about who you hurt? That's even worse! So upsetting people out of neglect is more heinous than upsetting them out of malice? The end result is the same, but I suppose we all look at things differently. Lorena bristled. She didn't have the time to listen to this woman and her convoluted words. If Tawa truly wanted to apologize, she should have done so and then let, her... and then let Lorena go. They didn't need to draw this conversation out any longer. It was uncomfortable enough as it was. <sighs> right. Well, you've said your piece, so that should be the end of it. You want to be rid of me? I do. Very much so. Hmm. That's rather sad. You'll recover soon enough, I'm sure. My god, Rita! My gosh! My word! She doesn't deserve this perhaps but this is a sorry state of affairs i realize i've offended you but i didn't mean to i just tawa frowned oh well i suppose it's all water under the bridge fine i won't talk to you if you don't talk to me i suppose being ignored is better than being despised you're gonna make me cry no Lorena, stop. 
All right, then. Tawa bent down and retrieved the broom Lorena had dropped. Here you go. Take it. Th thanks. Lorena wanted to sound unconcerned, but she couldn't. For some reason, her voice was trembling. It was further proof she couldn't spend time in Tawa's company. The older maid was far too difficult. Maybe even dangerous. <gasps> Lorena couldn't read her, no matter how she attempted. Tawa's eyes were impenetrable. Her small smile so well crafted it might as well have been a mirage. Once more, Lorena thought of Emily Soldine. She shook her head. Though Tawa was an accomplished actress, she was no Emily Soldine. She wasn't British enough. Maybe that was the reason Lorena felt so uneasy in her company. Are you... Why are you like this, Lorena? I don't... I don't like it. Lorena could understand the older woman. Therefore, she couldn't trust her. Wasn't that common sense? It seems logical enough to her. Alright. If you're happy, I suppose I'm happy. I'll try to refrain from making unnecessary comments in the future. You do that. I will. I can control myself. I hope I shall see you later, Lori. And Tawa left. Lorena watched as Tawa's long skirts fluttered around her legs with each footstep. It was only some five seconds later, when sense had finally returned to her, that Lorena remembered to mutter. And don't call me Lori. <laughs> call her Lori. All the time. Later that night. L Lorena. Yes, Ada, what is it? Uh, um, I I'm sorry. Ada shrank back, her head bowed, and for good reason. Lorena's tone was a good deal sharper than usual, and Ada was unused to being addressed so coldly by her closest friend. Lorena sighed, massaging her temple with her fingers. She knew she was being unfair, unreasonable even. Though she had suffered through a remarkable rotten day, it wasn't Ada's fault. Ada had nothing to do with Lady Constance's temper tantrums, Pauline's petty revenge, or Tawa's complex and confusing mind games. Ada was completely innocent. <clears throat> you don't need to apologize. I'm the one who's in the wrong. But, but, um, it looks like you were busy. I was busy, but I can always set time aside for you. Marina put her quill away. She had been in the middle of writing a letter to her mother, but she wasn't entirely sure what to write. Words failed her. Talking to Ada might help her put her thoughts in order. What did you want to talk about? Well, um, it's about the ghost. Did you happen to hear it again? It's even worse. Lottie told me she saw it. Oh, she did, did she? Though Lorena was rather fond of Lise a lot, it was hard not to be fond of Lise a lot. She didn't regard her as a trustworthy source of information. Lise a lot was fanciful to a fault, and she loved both fairy tales and ghost stories. Often, she made no dis distinction between the two. Y yes she was out on the hallways last night, bolting the windows and drawing the curtains when she saw a... A... A what? A figure in the garden. Was it a ghostly figure? She, she said it was quite ghostly. It wasn't Joe the gardener? N no. Lottie said it was very tiny, just like a child. It was wearing a long, flowing nightdress. Did she manage to look at its face? Sh she didn't get a chance. She was so very excited, she said she passed out for a few moments. Lottie, you're hella weird. <laughs> also, I bet you it's Lady Constance. That sounds like Lee's a lot. And when she came to, the figure was nowhere to be found. Very mysterious. I indeed. And Lee's a lot is convinced there was a ghost? I, I don't see what else it could have been. An actual person? Lorena sighed. She wasn't convinced herself, but she was the kind of person who refused to believe in anything unless she could see it with her own two eyes. With a yawn, the young maid began to divest herself of her uniform. She was growing tired, and it was a struggle for her to keep her eyes open. As was to be expected, Ada... Uh, what? As was to be expected, Ada politely averted her eyes. Lorena folded her uniform neatly, then put on her night clothes. When she stretched, the fabric strained against her chest. It probably needed a new she probably needed a new nightgown this one was several years old but she could hardly afford it i wonder 
Why would the ghost of a small child haunt the Rose Gardens of Bly? Lisa Lot said maybe a murder had taken place. Of course you think that. Lisa Lot loves drama. My throat refuses to work anymore. <laughs> I don't want to stop reading though. I love this game so far. Speaking of which, where's, where was Lisa Lot? It was almost 10 o'clock. Perhaps she was with the two scullery maids and maybe the cook. Irritable though she was, the cook had a rare soft spot for the dreamy Swiss maiden. <gasps> Are all of them gay? Oh, just have it be a gay fest. Telling them about her close encounter with the supernatural. As for Pauline and Isabel, they had been summoned to see Miss Smith an hour or so ago. Lorena didn't know what they were doing and, quite frankly, she didn't care. Lisa Lot said, um, p perhaps the previous owner of Bly was a scoundrel, and he sired an illegitimate child with a mistress. And then... Uh, and then, when he could no longer bear the shame of raising such a child, he murdered her. And buried her body in the rose garden? Th that's right! Does Lisa Lot have any proof? I, I don't know about proof, but she made it sound very plausible. She's a natural-born storyteller. Don't pay her any heed. But, but the ghost! I'm sure it will be fine. Don't worry about things too much, Ada. It was probably her imagin- But Lorena was unable to complete her sentence. That's because, at that moment, Pauline and Isabel entered the room. Goodness, Miss Smith can't talk. I feel absolutely exhausted. I always feel exhausted, and my poor hands are frozen. Why did we have to put out the fires? It's such a chore. I barely have enough strength to get changed. I can't undo the buttons of my blouse. Ah, uh, to be young again. Pauline cast a furtive look at Lorena. Her lips were curled into a smile, but her eyes were cold and hard. Lorena held her gaze, unflinching. Was this some kind of challenge? Lorena knew how Pauline felt about her, and Pauline had been more explicit about her feelings than usual as of late. Get MC new PJs 2019! <laughs> yes, spread the word. She needs new PJs. The comment from a few days hence continued to weigh on Lorena's mind. Slut. You don't realize how lucky you are, Lorena. How am I lucky exactly? She certainly didn't feel lucky. You're still young. Not yet in your 20th year. A beautiful rose just ripe for the picking. Or trampling. I beg your pardon? How long had Effie been in the room anyway? Effie was so quiet, Lorena often forgot she even existed. But when Effie did open her mouth to speak, what came out of it was always, invariably, the moon looks sad tonight. <laughs> or get MC new PJs 1819 is better. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Bizarre. Putting the, putting the moon to one side for now. Pauline's lips curled. You have a bright future ahead of you, Lorena. You're not so very bad looking, and you have a body most men would kill for. Most women would kill for it, too. I'm so cold, my hands won't stop shaking. It's a waste that you should while away your life employed as a mere maid. Do you agree not? Or do you not agree? Your pretty hands will start to seize up, just like mine. Believe it or not, even I was one young once. They all look to be like in their young 20s. How old are they? Are they like 23? And they're like, man, we're so old. I don't understand. Uh, but years upon years of hard work takes it out of you. Lorena narr narrowed her eyes, her lips pursed. Excuse me, but I'm not entirely sure what you're trying to say. Uh. <sighs> Why, it's simple. If I was a pretty young thing like you, I wouldn't hesitate to use my feminine wiles on the opposite sex either. Especially if it would make my job easier. I don't have any wiles, and if I did, I wouldn't know how to use them. Neither would I want to. That's what you say, but we know better. Giggle, giggle. Lorena's back stiffened. She bit her lower lip. 
Why were they bringing this up again? It's a pity Lady Lenard doesn't have any handsome young sons. If only she had, that would be your ticket for a, to a better life. <sighs> Lorena turned her head away. Her cheeks were flushed bright red with shame. I must say, it's brave you tried to seduce that Pickering boy. Incredibly bold. It's a pity it went so very poorly. I... I didn't. That's what you say, but the evidence is stacked against you. Why else were you dismissed from your previous job so abruptly? I... I... I, um... I don't think Lorena did anything wrong. Shush, Ada. The adults are talking. Y yes. <laughs> oh my word. Ada looked down at her un intertwined fingers. Her lower lips trembled. Despite being an adult herself, she was easily cowed. Ada wasn't a girl made for debates. She had a tendency to fold in, her in on herself like a stack of cards, though Lorena had to give her points for trying. Still, it's awfully brazen of you to try and deny your crimes. To continue going to church. To talk to us like we're equals. To even look us in the eye. When you're nothing more than a common whore. First slut, now whore. What's next? 